Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of thestyleshaker.com, your guide to green and clean beauty, and I am back with a get ready with me, slash I'm trying out a couple of new products, slash it's the Q&A, guys. You send in your questions. I'm so excited. I got great, great questions. Great questions. Can you tell I like them? I'm going to put on my face. I'm getting ready. I've got my coffee, and uh, I'm gonna answer all your burning questions. Sounds weird. Can't wait to dive in. Speaking of that, let's do it. Here we go. Quick heads up, if you're going from toxic to non-toxic and have no clue where to start, check out my free green beauty guide. Back on the website, it's the one pager I wish I had when I first started out. In the meantime, don't forget to like this video and make sure you subscribe so you never miss another one. Hello party people, it's coffee time. I'm just looking up your questions because you guys sent really good questions. Thank you so much. It's so nice to have questions just so I'm not like talking at you the whole time. I have to say I'm very excited about this. So is Blue. Blue was very excited. She just wanted to leave. Anyway, so what I've already put on my face is the Jane Iredale Beauty Prep. I used the Eye of Oris. This is $25 and it goes really fast. It's the only thing I found that I really like. Anyway, it's really early in the morning and I just thought I would do a get ready with me slash Q&A and I wanted to test out a couple of new products, mainly the crunchy eyeshadow because I got a ton of stuff from them. So I, I bought it, it's me, not sponsored. I'm gonna test this guy out and this will kind of be featured. See how the pigment is. I'm gonna start with the Vapor Organic Beauty Stratus Soft Focus. Oh my God, it's the longest name ever, it's the Vapor Primer. And I will take my first question from Laura. Oh, this is a good one. Oh crap. Do you have another job besides YouTube? If so, what field do you work in? Yes, I do have another job besides YouTube. I work in, this is gonna be shocking, influencer partnerships. So I help other companies figure out how to discover, source, and like build relationships with influencers. I am in corporate right now. I'm officially ready to not have the nine to five situation. Anyway, this is the Inica BB cream. Just putting this on to even out and get rid of the redness. Whenever I have any wine, I haven't had a lot of wine, but last night I had like a drop of rose. It just gets my skin very rose. Go fig. Uh -huh. Here. All I need is one question and I can talk for like 20 hours. I am my mother's daughter. Anyway, so all that said, yeah, corporate job, working on a way out of it, like the rest of us, I suppose. I've done it once and I survived and I started my own business in Dallas to help people figure out how to clean out their closets and their lives and that was fun. Now I'm in California and I wanna do it again. So the answer to that question might change in a few months. We'll see. Love the question though. Okay, this evened out a little bit, got rid of a little bit of redness, <sighs> but I want more. Next question, it's not a question, but I love you anyway. Are there any conventional makeup beauty products you still use? What product would you like to see released by a clean green brand? Okay, that's a twofer. Are there any products that I still use that are not in that category? So the thing is, Sometimes things in that category aren't actually non-toxic enough for me. This is this whole conversation about what does clean and green really mean. I rhyme. I haven't used this in a while. I'm gonna go in with a 14E foundation that looks really dark when I first put it on, so don't freak out. You're gonna freak out. It's like a whole debate. It's very confusing for the consumer. What is clean? What? I don't think necessarily all synthetic materials are bad. I don't think all natural things are good. You know, it's. I've learned a lot just in a few months. I do still use a couple that I know have, you know, phenoxyethanol in them. There's the Shu Amora eyebrow pencil. When I run out of that eye of Oris, because again, I go through it pretty quickly. This is the semi-matte foundation, by the way. I'm gonna press it in and then I'm gonna buff it in with a brush. I find that that really works the best. I really like the way this smells. Some people don't, I do, I don't know why. So the Shuamora Hard Pencil, and then I, God, I don't even, you know, actually that's kind of the only old conventional beauty piece that I use. I have found alternates for pretty much everything else that I use on my face, except brows are tricky. They're tricky because I'm kind of a stickler about them. Kind of a short answer. I'm looking around to see if I have anything else. I really don't use a lot of conventional stuff. Even hair, actually, I can't use a lot of conventional hair products because that's what sort of started all this. I used a hairspray. I think it was Redken. No offense to Redken. I had such a breakout on my face and I was itching. It was like der contact dermatitis and it was really bad. So I've stayed away from hair stuff too and I have I've yet to really dive into that. So I'm 
I think I'm probably, no, I don't even think I'm using conventional hair stuff. I have Evolve H for my shampoo and conditioner. I use Josh Rosebrook for styling products. I'm not gonna lie to you, the styling products that are conventional are so much better than what I use right now. Oh, I miss it, kinda, like I miss it. So yeah, that's kind of it. What product would I like to see released? Okay, by a green beauty brand. I'm gonna go in with the hint duet perfecting concealer i would love to see well first of all i would love to see more colors from like everybody hint included actually i love this concealer it's a great concealer the coverage is great texture is probably one of my favorite things about it actually it's probably my number one favorite thing about it it's the smoothest textured concealer it glides on like nothing else rms on cover up is pretty close but it's a bit more sheer. I would love to see Eye of Oris do a less expensive uh, version of their current brow pencil. <laughs> I'm harping. I would love to see, um, oh, that's a really good question. Other than that, I'd love to see people start using more sustainable packaging, like being a little bit more conscious with their packaging, the plastic containers. That's the type of green beauty stuff I'm looking for now. I don't miss conventional beauty at all. I don't feel like there's a big lack in terms of categories of assortment. I do think that color ranges are lacking and the packaging still needs to get to a better place. I also would love to see somebody create a diffusion line, which just means a less expensive line. Sorry, fashion over a decade. I want somebody to do a diffusion line, a lower price point brand and not compromise on ingredients. So we're not spending as much we're approachable for the rest of the population because my God, like $42 for a lip to cheek. Like that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, that's what I would like to see. Thank you for that question. You're wonderful. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that accent came out. Concealer. Concealed. I really mainly just use it around my eyes. I don't have a lot of breakouts, but yeah. This guy does a great job. You like it a lot. Next question, more coffee. Where'd you grow up? Okay, this is from Darcy. Sorry, my chair was like way too close. This is from Darcy Palmer. Where'd you grow up and what brought you to SF? Great question. Don't have enough time to answer it completely because I grew up in like everywhere. First, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna set with. It's the Crunchy No Filter Finishing Setting Powder. Very reminiscent to the RMS. Almost as good, almost as good. I think so. Um, the RMS, I know that people got flashback from that. I haven't tested this for that, but this is really great. I usually use my finger, but I'm feeling a little rushed right now. It's probably because the coffee's kicking in. Where did I grow up? Oh, Darce. Oh, Darcy, Darcy, Darcy. That's the loaded question. I was, ugh, I'm gonna do the condensed version. I was born in Dallas, Texas. Don't remember a thing, lived there for three years. And then, and then I moved outside of Chicago. I lived in a Northern suburb there for like eight and a half years. And then I just kept moving. So then there was Minneapolis for a year. There was Connecticut for two and a half years. There was having a Nashville for three and a half years before it was like really, really cool. And on the map, it was very denim and diamonds, very fried peach pies, very Southern. Nothing wrong with that. Just a little bit of a culture shock for me and my family. And um, the next question you're all probably thinking is, was your father in the military? No, he wasn't. He was not in the military. He just kept getting new jobs and promoted and he did a great job. I love my dad. Good relationship with my dad. My mom was, she's just kind of like, you're a wing woman. Then my mom was like, Nashville? Okay. Connecticut? Whoops. Oh crap, I just got stuff on my sweatshirt. So I say I grew up Midwest, East Coast, New England side, and then I went to college in Boston, and then back to Chicago, Dallas. <laughs> See, it's a really long answer, sorry. You asked, you asked, I'll tell you. I'm gonna use the Vapor Atmosphere Luminous Foundation just for Cupid's bow stuff. And what brought me to SF is, I was living in Texas, I was there for 10 years, I thought I'd be there for six months. Not, to this day, I cannot believe I was there for that long. That's usually when people go, how old are you? That was not a question. And I was working at Neiman Marcus. I went from the buying offices to online. And then by the end of my run there, I was really miserable. I was invited on a trip to San Diego by one of my closest friends. I was getting on the plane. I'm gonna use eyeliner now, the Ilia eyeliner. I'll put all the links below, by the way. I was like, oh yeah, I wanna go to San Diego. I've never been to San Diego. I get to go to San Diego, but like my, I lose my phone, like everything's screwing up. It was like a mess. Almost didn't get on that flight and I, did end up getting on that flight. I mean, I was a mess. 
just everything you think could go wrong went wrong. I landed in San Diego. We were staying at this house. The next morning I walked out on the beach. I don't even know what it was, but just sort of hit me. I said, okay, I gotta go to California. I would put pictures up in my new office. Like I actually had an office with doors, which is very rare these days. I just would watch those videos over and over. And I just started going like, I have to live in San Francisco because I met somebody in San Diego who lived in San Francisco. So then I was flying back and forth to San Francisco all the time. Lights so Virgin had opened up a hub back when they were cool. I was flying back and forth for like $150 round trip. So you bet I was flying there probably once a month. So hard to talk and put on eyeliner. So I'm just winging it out. It's blue. Anyway had to get here. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. It's like five times the cost of living in Texas. And I also wanted to quit my corporate job. So I was like, hmm, you're quitting your corporate job. You're not gonna have as much money and you wanna to move to the most expensive city in the world. Well, one of, cool. Just ended up working out. I wanna take up the entire video with that story. If you guys wanna hear that story, then let me know. Also, loving the Q and A's, hope you are too. If you have additional questions, beauty, whatever, skincare, anything, leave them on this video because I think I wanna keep doing these Q and A get ready with me. I know I'm obsessed with winging my liner. I know it. I know I'm in a bit of a rut there and maybe I'll jump out of it. I don't know. It's just my feedback to myself. Hey. Okay. Oh, great question. Okay, this is from Marion Savage. I'm just gonna fix this because this it's driving me crazy. Okay, okay, okay. How did I start? How did I start? That's how did I start Green Beauty, not the channel, because that's a way longer story. Green Beauty started when I whoa, I totally forgot to pull out the mascara. Hold please. I'm gonna do the Jane Iredell Pure Lash with the Lily Lolo Big Lash, 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 so I started after attending a wedding. I had this really bad cold and my, actually the friend who invited me to San Francisco, his sister, his little sister was getting married. Oh no, he was getting married. Oh my God, sorry. He was, oh my God, his story is amazing. A San Francisco love story, so cute. But you didn't ask me that question. So, sick as a dog, basically like a family member. So I had to go to the wedding because it was a Napa, you know, I was like, I have to go. I took as so many Advil cold and sinuses. I didn't have like a flu. I wasn't contagious. It was just sort of residual snotty mess. You know, the cute kind. I didn't have a date to the wedding because I just kind of broken up with my boyfriend at the time. So I was feeling pretty great. I was feeling pretty great. So I was feeling all kinds of wonderful, as you could imagine. And I got to the wedding and I don't know what happened. I just headaches went away. I started feeling really good and I started talking to people. And one of the people that I started a conversation with was his sister started telling me all about makeup. And I have never in my life been a makeup person. I really, uh, up until this point, I never really focused on it. I would buy a lot of things from CVS. Things can change. So I'm talking to her and she's pregnant at the time. And she's telling me about all of this stuff. Like how he was banned, you know, 11,000 chemicals and we've banned like two and I'm sitting there listening to her and I again sick as a dog and I'm like this is crazy I kind of knew it but I didn't really know it and then she started telling me more and more about it and she worked for beauty counter and I had no idea what beauty counter was and I found out what beauty counter was I didn't really like a lot of their products and I love what they do uh, I also kind of find it weird when old friends pop up out of nowhere and they're like hey how are you can we talk for 10 minutes and you think they just want to catch up with you but really they just want you to join their pyramid scheme I I don't like that. So if you're somebody who wants to do that, just don't contact me. Like that's not the right way to do it. But anyway, I digress. So she started telling me all this stuff. She's talking about beauty counter. I look into beauty counter. This weird confluence of events just sort of started happening. I don't even know how it got from that to the YouTube channel. I was doing product reviews for fashion and then it switched over to Green Beauty. Oh my God, I think I know. I think I was signed up to work with Influencer and they were sending me so much good stuff. I mean, I thought it was good. Boxes of L'Oreal skincare products and Burberry products. And I mean, I'm talking like big stuff and I hadn't even reviewed anything. I had zero followers. I, think I looked, somebody must have said like, look up the ingredients and I did. I started looking at all my other stuff and I had samples from my time at Neiman's. I have friends that work at Chanel. They would send me samples. So a lot of what I had in my beauty arsenal was really filled with samples because I knew a lot of people in the industry and I'd never spend that much money for this stuff. I start going through it and a Chanel eyeshadow, I looked 
looked up and I'm like, how do you find out what's in this? I couldn't find out what was in it. It was a rabbit hole. And then I find out somebody took a random picture of the background of the packaging, which you, I mean, it's really hard to find the ingredients. And there was Teflon in it. I think when I saw Teflon in an eyeshadow, I lost my mind. So I started doing makeup reviews here. You'll see like if you go all the way back, like you don't have to. I was reviewing Hourglass, I was reviewing YSL, and then all of a sudden I started switching over to go, I think I wanna look at green stuff and it just, the floodgates opened. I mean, there was so much to learn. There was so much I didn't know. And then that's when people started commenting back for the first time in my professional, kind of personal, but kind of professional, I got these comments back and people were with me. They were in the same boat. And it was the first time that I felt like what I was doing was actually helping people spend and invest wisely. I got to the point where I started like advising people on ingredients. Oh. Now I'm here. By the way, I used the Coco Kind Maca Beat Tinted Moisture Stick. I've never featured that. It's just a balm. I don't find it to be very pigmented, but I like it as a balm and you can put it on your cheeks. It's okay, but I love the brand. They're Bay Area based, so I love them. But I don't just love all Bay Area based brands. Anyway, can you tell the coffee's kicking in? Because it is, I needed it. I think I have time for one more question. This has gone on really long, but again, I love these questions. We go to the Instagram DMs because I've avoided <laughs> You guys asked a lot of questions there. Actually, I just answered that question. How long have you been in green beauty? What made the switch? What is an underrated green beauty brand? Underrated green beauty brand. Freaking great question. I don't know what an underrated brand is. Um, oh my God, I don't know. I have to think about that. So I'm gonna try the crunchy eyeshadow and I have it in the color Allure. I'm just gonna do a dusting. It's sort of a, I always do neutrals. It's like a taupey neutral. I like the packaging here. You can tell they really thought about sustainability. I'm doing the crease. Underrated brand. I feel like I'd just be making something up. So I need to think about that and then I'm gonna get back to you. The overrated green beauty products? Oh girl, but a couple. The Cure Weiss, hello. I know some people love it. Listen, I get it. But the fact that it just sort of the texture died within like a week of being open for the price point, no. I think that's highly overrated. This is a nice color, not a huge pigment payoff, but Perfect for every day. Lila B, while I actually really love the product, I would never pay 42, 46 or whatever again for that. You can find you can find options elsewhere. You could just use the 100% pure lipstick and use that as a lip and cheek, as far as I'm concerned. I'm gonna go in with the bronzer and then I'm gonna do a lip. So I'm using the Hint Beauty Bronzer. Oh my God, this is these are great questions. If you could only use three products on your face, I'm gonna do a whole video for that. I'm gonna do a whole video for that. That's a challenge. If I could only use three products. Oh, wow. I have to say, well, I mean, brow, lashes, concealer, I guess. But then I'd be missing my beloved bronzer. But I mean, if that's it, if I only get three, maybe I'll do five. Yeah, because I just, it's really all the eye area. It changes the whole structure of my face. It makes me go from sad to awake. You know, it just brightens everything up. And then evening the skin tone is really important. Yeah, I, w I would totally do five, but that would be the bare, bare minimum. I would use brows, I would use Eye of Oris brows. I would use, ooh, the mascara. If I only had one, I'd do the primer combo with the actual mascara, which is Honest Beauty. Then I would use the cover up. I would probably use RMS because it goes from cover up to concealer for me really well. It's also the shade matching on that one. I might use Hint concealer too. I don't know. I would just need to get a little bit darker of a shade. So I would look a little not so. Great question. Love that question. Seriously, I think I should do like five product face. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. I think I'm gonna branch out from the everyday reviews because I'm building that database back on the site and just go there and see the quick scorecard rating for every product I review. I get a lot of questions like, have you tried this yet? Have you tried this yet? Which I love those. I would be asking those questions. So I'm going to consolidate and make it searchable. And I've been working on it now for a couple of weeks. Um, I will definitely announce it in a video. I'll probably do like some sort of giveaway or I don't know what I'll do. I'll figure something else out, but that's coming. I'm um, using the Kosas lipstick in rose water. 
just like an easy everyday. Also, it smells so good. It smells like vanilla and I wanna eat it, but I won't because it's a lipstick. That would be gross. What, 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 Gotta get more lip liners. I'm using this Red Apple Lipstick Liner. That's something I'm gonna add to my shopping list. So that's Eye of Oris and then the lip liners. Oof. Somebody write that down, I'm gonna forget it. Just kidding, I'll remember. Just kidding, I probably won't. How many times can I say just kidding? Just get out. It just, it polishes up the lip. It does, I love it. I think I'm as into, I talk, always talk about lash primers. I think I'm that into lip pencils now because it just makes a difference. It's, it might be subtle. Somebody else may not even know it, but I do. I think it through all the questions. So I think I'm just gonna keep doing Q and A's. I love the questions. I know I've said that 800 times. So I want you to keep sending them if you're up for it. If you enjoyed this video, I know I say this in every video, but it would be really helpful if you let me know whether or not you love the Q and A's and the get ready with me's a little bit more than the one-off product reviews. I do. I think I might just start going in that direction. I've already been hinting at it. It's just more fun. I think that translates on camera. So hopefully it's more fun for you. If you have any additional questions, let me know. And I just got my hair cut and I needed you to know that. You're my people. I'm gonna go finish up my coffee. I'm gonna talk to the cat for like five seconds and just tell her I love her. And I wanna also tell you guys that I love you too. And I thank you so much for being here. We'll see you right back here next time. Until then, bye. Preguntas. That four years of Spanish really paid off, huh? <sighs>